Welcome to the Destiny Church Tees Valley podcast. As you listen, it is our prayer that you are transformed by audacious faith, inspiring hope, and extravagant love. Praise the Lord. Well, we're continuing on with our series on uh, worldviews and the importance of what we believe and what we believe, how that makes a difference in our lives, it makes a difference in our world, it makes a difference um, in our families, in our culture, and uh, you know we've we've kind of brought some uh, really good things out of what really makes a difference to what we believe. It isn't just kind of you can believe what you want to believe and I can believe what I want to believe, um, because that's why the world is in the mess it is because of us doing our own thing. Yes. And so it is important to us. So um, <clears throat> we we looked at initially at, uh, at at the importance of belief and how that could make a difference in our lives. And um, you know, we really wanted to um, get a handle on that. We looked at some of the different beliefs that have been around, um, or that are around. But as we mentioned, there are probably as many different ways of viewing the world as there are people in the world. Uh, we often look through our own lenses. There isn't, um, so often people have their own view of what is true and what isn't true. And, uh, and we looked at the importance of understanding truth and living by truth and accepting the truth and how we can know the truth. And uh, the way that when we live according to the truth, it r- dramatically changes our lives. Um, When we're not living according to what's true, and we looked at that, didn't we, in in depth, uh, um, about the fact that how that affects our society, affects us personally, affects our families, our schools, our universities, our workplace. It affects every strata of our world. Um, When when we uh, are doing that, it shows in so many different ways. And uh, if you want to know more about that, uh, there is... um, podcasts that uh, that the PA team put online and of course I think that goes through to all our connect groups so if you're not in a connect group get in a connect group you'll get the resources and and access to things that will help you uh, to grow and so I want today just to look at particularly about about the world and how the world got so messed up I think it's important for us to realize that the world is messed up yes um, sometimes uh, uh, we can we can look through at, at a world and uh, um, and and for some people they I think they think that things are getting better, but actually if you analyse things it's amazing how bad things are. In other words, what I'm trying to say is not everything in the world is good. Not everything that we see is beautiful. Not everything that we see uh, has um, you know that we look at is is unbroken. We see uh, many things that are broken in our world. We see many things that are, um, are destroyed, things that are decaying. And uh, we see so much of that around our world. And one of the things that we can do, uh, for example, is if I was just to bring in a newspaper, you would see from the newspaper, you would see the news in it and see how the majority of the news is bad news. Um, uh, I remember at one time that they brought out a newspaper called Good News and they tried to um, to promote it, but of course people didn't want good news, they wanted bad news. Bad news makes news. And so it, it's, that's what makes it, isn't it? It's some, some kind of thing. If you if you good news, of course we do like good news, but... Uh, but it doesn't sell newspapers. It's um, it's uh, and, and the, the the place went out of uh, things. So if you look at the international section, you'll see about terrorism, about war, about genocide. If you look at the national section of newspapers, you see the lies, the scams, the corruption in business and politics. If you look at a local section, you'll see rapes and murders and arson. Um, as well. Business section, you see scandals, fraud, embezzlement. If you look at the sports section, well, there's drug abuse, cheating, gambling, all those things going on. If you look at the entertainment section, we have it all. (laughs) Um, And so it's important for us to understand that. 
that, um, that, that our world is, is, is in trouble. And if this is what our children are growing up into, and we realize that as we go along that things are gradually getting worse, I mean, just in my lifetime, seeing some of the things that have changed um, in, in this country and the way things are that in some ways, you know, financially some things are better off and some things are worse off, but in terms of people's lives, you look around and you see lives that are broken. You see desperation. We see that for all our technology, sickness is rampant. Um, our hospitals are filled to capacity. Um, it doesn't matter where you look. You look, there's still people being, be, being formed, being born deformed. There's still disasters. There's still catastrophes. The world is filled with all sorts of things. And so it's important for us, I think, to understand uh, why the world got the way that it did, why it has got to this, to this stage, yes? Why is it in a mess? Why is the world that we look at uh, slowly um, decaying and going downhill? And the, the reason is quite simple. It's profound, but it's simple, and that is we have all sinned. We have all sinned. It is sin in the world that causes destruction, that causes uh, the world to be destroyed. And sin is any attitude or action that is against God. So anytime we do something that is against God's plan, God's will, God's desire, what's on God's heart, then it is sin. Romans 5 and verse 12 says this, sin came into the world because of what one man did and with sin came death. In other words, where before sin came into the world, there was no death. When Adam sinned, death came into the world. When he, when he went against God's plan, when he did what God had told him not to do, that's when death came into the world. There was no death before that. We are designed to live forever. Medically, they've shown that, that we're actually, we are designed to live forever. Our skin um, keeps reproducing every kind of seven years. And when you look at the biology of the human person, we are not designed to die. We are actually designed so that what, they, what we can't understand is what triggers in the body that causes us to decay. What, what causes that to change we, we fully, we don't, uh, we don't understand that. Now, theologically, we understand it, but from a scientific point of view, we, under, we think, why when things are grow, going well, why does the aging process come in? Why does it that after a certain amount of time that we start to, to decay, things go wrong in our bodies? I want to say to you that I am not what I used to be. I can't run like I used to be. I don't even think as fast as I used to think. Uh, I don't know, some of you think, well, he didn't think very fast then, but anyway. Um, but, uh, but, but what I'm saying is, is that particularly for those of you that are, uh, that are over the age of probably about 40, you realize that your bodies are starting to, to decay. Things are not working as they used to work, yes? And so we understand that, and that's, that was a big sin that has brought that into the, to the world. Ecclesiastes um, chapter 7 and verse 20 says, There is not a single person in all the earth who is always good and never sins. There is not one single person that always does what is right. In other words, it's not just about Adam. It's about all of us. We're all in this together. We're all culprits because we've all broken God's law. We've all sinned, yes? I don't know about you, but I've never met anyone who claimed to be perfect. It doesn't matter through where, where, wherever you go and whatever culture you go, you never, you never meet people who feel that, that's, that, that, that they've never done anything wrong. They might think that they've been good enough to get into heaven. I don't know about you, but I don't meet my own standards Never mind God's standards. 
I, I do what I don't want to do, yes? So there's things that I don't want to do, and yet I stupidly do them. And then there's things that I do want to do, and I don't do. So on both end things, we realize that actually we can't meet our own standards, never mind the standard that God has set. So we all recognize this in ourselves. I don't know about you, but I disappoint myself. Yes? And, and, and you find that I disappoint you as well. <laughs> and so when there is that disappointment, we realize why? Because we are faulty goods because of sin in our life. Sin is a universal problem. It doesn't matter where you go in the world, sin is universal. Romans 3 and verse 10 says, As the Scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. Or Ecclesiastes 7 verse 20 says, Not a single person on earth is always good and never sins. And 1 John 1 and verse 8 says, If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So in other words, if you say that you never sin, if you say that you never do wrong, then you're a liar. Because we all know, and sometimes you might think you're doing okay, but if you were just to ask people around you, they would soon correct you. Because we realize it's so easy in the words we say, the things that we do, the things that we fail to do, that we make mistakes. And so we hurt one another, and we hurt things around. And so that's why our world is in the mess that it is. Now, the thing is, there are four types of wrongdoing. In other words, when the Bible talks about sin, about doing wrong, it talks about four different words that are used. And so the first one, which is sin, which we are familiar with, is actually an archery term. It's a term used when you were to fire a bow and an arrow at a target. So in other words, if uh, for this morning, if George had brought um, some of his, uh, his gear for archery and he would have shown us his skills and abilities, uh, he says he's probably lost them now. Um, but, um, but, but all I'm saying is, is that if he was to do that, and, and he could, he was, he was a coach in, uh, in archery, if he was to do that and, you'd, and we were all to do that, now he may get the bull every time, but let's say, for example, I do it and I miss, I have fallen short. Yes? In other words, I've missed the target. I've missed the standard of what was expected. And, that's, and so when the Bible talks about sin, this is the term that it's using. It's an archery term. Yes? And, but, and so and, and Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the expectations of the glory of God, of what he asks of us. Now, the nice thing is, is that God forgives our fallen shorts. Uh, some of you are getting there. <laughs> In other words, not doing what we should do, yes? God forgives us. The second word is transgression. Doing what we shouldn't do. In other words, we trespass. Going beyond into forbidden territory. This is why when we read the Lord's Prayer, I know they've changed it somewhat, um, but, uh, uh, but it says, forgive us our trespasses. Yes? Forgive us, you know, not just for our sin, but for our trespasses. In other words, for going where we shouldn't go, doing what we shouldn't have done. This is not just a falling short of the standard, of missing the standard. This is going beyond what was... In other words, if you go to a farmer's field, there's a boundary around it. If you go into his field, you are trespassing. You are going where you shouldn't go, yes? So, in other words, that's the same thing with, uh, with, for example, in marriage. There's boundaries. So, if you go and have a relationship with somebody outside of that, that's trespassing. That's going outside of the boundaries that God has asked for us, yes? So, that's what, what that means. In other words, it's something that it's deliberate, deliberate, it's intentional. It is a decision to break the law. So, it's a little bit like faith going down the road at 80 miles an hour in a 60 mile an hour zone. That is breaking the law. That is trespassing. She says, I wish the car would do 80 miles an hour. I know. But, uh, but well, so what I'm saying is these are 
doing and going beyond that thing. The third thing that's used is iniquity. Now, iniquity has a number of meanings. Um, one of them is that it's not about an action, but it's about character. Yes? In other words, it's talking about the heart. Iniquity is talking about the heart. It's an attitude of the heart. So, in other words, it could be jealousy. It could be anger. It could be envy. It could be bitterness. It could be any number of things that it's an issue of the heart in iniquity. Now, the Bible compares us to sheep. So this imagery of iniquity is that, in other words, we are prone to wander off and do our own thing. That's what sheep do. If you leave them, they're not trying to be naughty so often, but they just wander. And so if there's no offense, they will just wander off uh, on, on their own. They're just, uh, and, and, that, and we are like sheep. That's what Isaiah says. All we like sheep have gone astray. Each one has gone and done his own thing. We've gone our own way and tried to, to, to kind of make a things. And so that's what uh, this is, is, is talking about, Isaiah 53 and verse 6. So we've all done our own thing. Yes, God says, I want to do this. I'd love for you to do this. Um, but we say, well, actually, I prefer the grass over here. It looks a lot greener. This, uh, this looks a lot more appetizing. I would rather uh, watch Leeds United lose than I would <laughs> wherever it might be. So, in other words, we have decisions every day, but it's a heart issue. So, when we do something in our heart and we have bitterness in our heart or anger in our heart, that's an iniquity aspect to it. And so, uh, you know, we have a natural disposition of the heart to, uh, to be um, uh, uh, crooked, to be perverse, to swerve off cause. And the fourth one is guile, uh, which is, um, which I married a guile, I might add. Um, so, um, uh, we'll say no more on that. But anyway, um, but in other words, that's a project, when you're guile, you are projecting what is false. We talked about last week, we are rationalized, yes? We're trying to, um, we, we're telling lies about what is, what is actually going on. And we're trying to, um, you know, rationalize it. We're trying to make an excuse for it. Yes, we tell lies to cover up, to deceive. We're frauds. We pretend to be somebody or something that we're not. Yes. And, um, and so that, again, is sin. So I hope you get an idea of that. In a little. So in other words, so uh, an example, Psalm 32 and verse 5. In the end of NIV, we see three of these words being used in the same verse. In Psalm 32 and verse 5, it says, Then I acknowledged my sin. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. So in that one verse, we see three types of sin that David is confessing and talking about. A fantastic chapter is Psalm 32 um, that would really, you, you would find it um, excellent to, uh, to do. There are, there are three reasons for, for us to, to, to have these, to have sin, transgression, iniquity, and guile in our lives. And the first one is nature. There's nature, there's nurture and there's culture. Those are the three things that affect us. The first one with regard to nature. We inherited a natural tendency to do our own thing from a guy behind the PA. <laughs> it's Adam's fault. Yes, I think if I was called Adam, I'd change my name. <laughs> it's his birthday today. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I, mean, I, I will just say this. Adam is a brilliant guy. He serves as well. He is absolutely phenomenal. Couldn't ask for more from him. He is. So it's not that Adam. <laughs> but the first Adam, um, was it was because of him. Romans 8 verse 7 says, For the sinful nature is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws and it never will. 
nature. You see it everywhere. I don't know about you, but I know that there's a nature, there's a natural tendency for me to do the wrong thing. Um, well, it, it's easily seen, I think, particularly as parents, when you see your children. And one of the things that you're aware of as your children grow up is right from the beginning, you never, ever, I've never seen a parent teach a child to do wrong. I'm not saying there aren't any, but, but, but generally speaking, they don't. You spend your whole life as parents trying to correct the errors. They have a natural, um, innate nature to be selfish. If they're playing with toys, you're trying to teach, share, Nadine, share. <laughs> <laughs> She's here today, I can get me uh, <laughs> Share, Nadine, you know, mm, fine, you know, whatever. Now, we all did it. Without exception, we were all selfish. We all wanted to be. We all want what is, is for ourselves. There is an innate nature within us to do wrong, to be selfish, to want our own way. Right from the beginning, when Adam and Eve, when they decided to do things their way, when they wanted way, that, that came in to the, into the world. And so you and I have that nature. Yes? Now, one of the things I was thinking about was thinking, when I walk into a room, I don't walk into a room thinking, I wonder how I can help the people in this room. I walk into a room and think, I wonder what these people are thinking about me. Anybody else do that? <laughs> yeah? Do you go into a room when you go into, whether it's at home or here or in your connect group or at workplace or in university, whatever it is, do you go into, into, into a room and think to yourself, I wonder how I can um, help the people in this room to be better. How can I kind of, we, we don't do it, that's not our natural thing. If we were to do that, we would have to think about it beforehand and intentionally go into that room thinking, today, I'm going to go in this room and I'm going to think about others. Because our natural tendency is to think about ourselves. What do people think about us? What do they think about what I'm doing? Do they think I'm wearing something beautiful or whatever it is? Is my hair out of place? Whatever, you, you know what I'm trying to say? We, we are caught up with ourselves, aren't we? Yes. So <clears throat> we're, we, we walk into a room and we think, what can I get out of the other person? Not what can I give? Yeah. Our natural inclination is to do that. But the, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 17, verse 9, a, a wonderful passage uh, of Scripture there. But right after it's talking about, um, you know, blessed is the man who, uh, 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 you know, walks um, not, in, he's not in the counsel of the ungodly, but that kind of thing. In other words, he's like a tree planted by uh, the streams of water. So it's very similar to Psalm... Um, one, in, in, in a lot of things. And I, when I try to memorize them, I get confused between the two. I think, But anyway, but it, it's a beautiful, beautiful passage, is Jeremiah. But right after some of these wonderful things, it then says, but the heart is deceitful above all things. And who can understand the heart? Who can grasp it? You know, who can fathom it? Who can get to the bottom of it? Well, the answer, of course, is nobody other than when we come to Jesus. And so, now you might be saying to, to yourself, what does that mean? <coughs> well, it means that you and I have an amazing ability to lie to ourselves about things. Yeah? And not only do we lie to ourselves, what I mean is, is we believe our own lies because our heart is deceitful. The word deceit means that you're deceived. It, yeah? In other words... If I, um, if, if I was told today that Leeds United had gone up to the premiership, we can both, but yeah, and I believe that I have been deceived because I'm believing something that's not true. Yes? 
Now, the question is, is now, if you'd said that to me and I believed it, you have deceived me. But the issue is, I deceive myself. I actually believe lies that I've told myself. And you, we all do. We, we have that in, in us. And so that's why he says, the heart is deceitful above all things. Yes? We tell ourselves it's not a big deal. It's not a problem. Oh, I can get away with that. This is only a small thing. It won't matter. Whatever it is, we think that we can get away with it and we deceive ourselves with it. And that's why we need other people in our lives. That's why our connect groups are so important to us because you're in a small group of people in a community of people that are able to speak into your life and are able to say, Jonathan, that's not right. They're able to say to, to, to you and to say, well, you know, if we, have you thought about it this way? And, and being able to, to help us and to correct us and to encourage us and to, and to keep us focused on the, right, on the right way because on our own, we have a tendency to sphere off, to, to swerve off, to, to do our own thing. But when we are together, we help each other, yes, to stay on the right course. So that's why I want to encourage you to be in a connect group, be in a relationship, be, get, you know, get along people that can, can lift you up and encourage you and strengthen you, but people that will speak into your life. And of course, read the Bible on a daily basis and allow that to speak into your life because God wants to speak to your life. You can't read the Bible without God speaking to you. He will always want to speak to you. There's so much in it, you might want to say it's information overload. You, you know, there's a lot there, so just might want to take a little bit at a time, but get the truth of the Word of God into us, yes? So we have the nature. The other thing we have is nurture. We learn to sin from people around us. Our parents are great models for this <laughs> because they model to us doing wrong. They model it for us in so many different ways because we, you can't be a child growing up in a family without seeing your parents make mistakes, without seeing your parents do things that are wrong. Now, in a nice marriage and in a nice parents, you would see, in a godly parents, you would see them forgiving one another. You would see the restoration of relationship. You would see the healing process as well as the hurting process. But, uh, but, it's, but, but we learn from them, yes? And, uh, and so we, we do that. So, in other words, when you're looking at your parents, your, one of your parents will probably be like a skunk, and the other one will be more like a turtle. In other words, one kind of blows up, and yes, a big smell everywhere, and uh, a stink, and, uh, and the other one looks like a turtle and goes into its shell and says nothing and kind of hides. And what you usually find, a skunk marries a turtle. Um, I mean, I'm not saying they always do. Sometimes it might not be a turtle. It could be. <laughs> anyway, we'll go there. Um, <clears throat> so, in other words, when you're growing up, you either learn to be a martyr or a tomato. No, I mean, you either learn to be a martyr, <laughs> a martyr or a manipulator. And we learn these things as we're growing up, yes? And, uh, and so we learn that from other people. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33 says this, bad company corrupts good character. That's why we worry about the people that our children hang around with. Yes? When Faith and Nadine were growing up, we were concerned with who they hung around with at school. And when they hung around with certain children, we knew some of the things that they were picking up and where they were picking it up from, the things that they would say, the attitudes that they would have and things. So they, it was a learned behavior where they were perfect at home. <laughs> they went to school and came back and... So we understand that, don't we, that we, that we do that. Now, that doesn't end when you leave school. It still is important. I was talking to someone the other day um, in, the, in the children's room, and, um, and they were talking about their daughter, 
And I was, we were talking to him and inviting him to church and things. And, um, and, and uh, he was talking about his daughter. Oh, she'd been to nightclub la- last night and been out till three o'clock in the morning. And then she said, he said who she'd been with. And I thought, actually, they're meant to be Christians. And I'm thinking to myself, how easy it is for us on our friendship because who your friends are will determine the path that you take. If you walk with them, you will walk the same path as them. And when you're on a path, you lead where that path leads. Yes, you can't walk down a path. For example, I can't walk down the path from here down to go to Stockton and expect it to get me to the center of Norton. I would have to turn around and take a different, a different course. And so what I'm saying to you is it, it, who we spend our time with affects us. If we spend time with people swearing, guess what we will eventually do? If we spend time around people who are taking drugs, guess what we will eventually do? If we spend time around people who are drinking alcohol, uh, to think we, we do that, don't we? Yes? And, and we are all easily led astray. Yes, for all have sinned except pastors. <laughs> you, if you knew anything about me, you'd go, oh, God is a merciful God. <laughs> yeah, and I was the same. I got in with, with people. I was in, and easily led and got into all sorts of things because of the people who were doing. If they went out thieving, guess what I would do? Yeah, if they went out to, to, to discos, where would I go? So I followed along. So uh, a bad company corrupts good morals, doesn't it? Yes? And so it's in front. Now, the third thing is culture. Culture helps us sin. It pulls us down. It never pulls us up. Remember, you can catch a sickness, but you never catch health. Yeah? You can catch sin and get into that, but you're not going to catch health. That's something where you have to, it can only ever come when you actually determine to be healthy. Yes, when you do the right things, when you have the right diet and the right intake and you have support around us, that's why we do the Daniel plan uh, because we know that we need each other to help each other um, on that because it's easy to swerve off on ourselves. But if we associate with people, and let's say everybody in the family, no one else is doing the Daniel plan, it is going to be very difficult, if not impossible, for you to stay on the Daniel plan because you are going to be surrounded completely, constantly by temptation. And our culture does that. Our culture is constantly trying to get us to bring us down, not to lift us up, yes? So sin and Satan use culture to get us to do the wrong thing. And, 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 and you look around that. Advertisement, for example... They're always trying to lure us to buy things that we don't need to impress people we don't know or don't like. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Advertisements work. Why? Because they're trying to lure you in and they're not not trying to say, you know, if you you buy this or if you go to this place or if if you, whatever it might be, they're trying to get you to, uh, to, 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 to go down a certain path. Romans 12 and verse 2 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Yes, because why is it saying that? Because we naturally do copy the behavior and customs of this world. Yes, so wherever your friends go, that's where you're going to know. Birds of a feather flock together. That's right. So we, we go together on it. It's, it's some, the, the Phillips paraphrases Romans 12 and says this, don't let the world squeeze you into its mold, try to dominate or try to dominate your life, let God transform you instead. So we all blow it, don't we? Yes, we all make things and do things that are wrong. So next week I'm going to look at how the world has gone wrong, the results of our sin, and hopefully look at the reason that God allows this to happen and our response to what God is, uh, it, what God wants us to respond to what he is doing. Yes, I think that's important to us. Psalm 24 uh, verses 3 to 5 says this, Who may stand in the holy place? 
who may stand, in other words, in God's presence. And he says, only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never tell lies, they will receive the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God, their Savior. I want you to be blessed. I want you to know God's blessing in your life. And then so you've got to have clean hands and a pure heart. Does that mean you have to be perfect? Well, obviously not. We are not perfect, and we're not going to be perfect till we are with him. What it means is, is have you confessed your sin? Have you washed uh, your, 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 yourself, uh, figuratively speaking? Have you cleansed the wounds? And, and so some of that, for example, today is coming to Christ and saying, I need to forgive so-and-so. Um, so there's, there's a forgiveness that you need to offer because when somebody's wounded you and there are things in your life, you need to, to know the cleansing on that wound. You need that he wound to be healed. And that needs you to offer forgiveness. But you have all also have hurt others and sinned. And so God wants you to, um, uh, to, to forgive and to be forgiven. And so today I want to just to invite you um, to, to make a decision to follow Jesus. The greatest decision you can make in your life is to accept Jesus as your boss, as your savior, as your Lord in your life, to take control of your life, to go his way. It will change and transform everything about your life. <coughs> <coughs> I want to invite you today to ask God to make his plan for your life um, plain to you. James says, if you ask God, he will make it plain for you. He will, but you've got to believe that he will tell you because a doubting mind is as unstable as a wave of the sea which is blown here and there by the wind. So in other words, God wants you to know his will. He wants you to know his ways and that is so important for us. So today I just want to offer us some time and just as we sing, I want you to stand together. And I just want us to just for you to pray and to come before the Lord and just to come through some of these things of just accepting his lordship, believing what he said about you, believing his plan for your life, confessing your sins, confessing things. If there's certain things that come up in your mind as now in these next few moments as you're just might be a person, it might be something that you've done or failed to do. If there's, uh, if there's something that comes into your mind, just confess it now to God because it cleanses, it washes you. It makes your hands clean and your heart pure when you come to God to that. Ask the Holy Spirit to come into your life. Ask him to fill your life. Ask him to empower you. Ask him to help you in your daily life so that you can live according to his plan and his purpose. Today, it may be that you need to get plugged into a connect group. It may be you need to get connected into maybe a prayer partner. Uh, I don't know what it might be, but just if somebody to come along and uh, that's going to be a good character in your life, that's going to help you to, 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 to walk wisely. The, the wise walk with the wise. If you want to become wise, you walk with the wise. So today, just do that. Maybe pray to him, Lord. Help me to have the right people in my life. Help me to have the right, uh, the right connections, the right people praying and reading the word with me today that I might grow and might, might strengthen. And I'm just going to pray in a moment, but I just want to give you some, some moment time just for you to think through what I've said and to be able to come to him today and say, I want to be clean. I want to be pure. I want to be right start again I want to be that light that you want me to be thank you Jesus if today you want to cross that line if you want to make Jesus your Lord and Savior just pray to him just ask him say Lord Jesus I know I've gone my own way and done my own thing but today I ask for you to come into my heart into my life, into my mind. I want you to take control. I want you to be boss. I want you to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. Today I ask
ask the Lord to fill me with your Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord to fill you today. To fill you to overflowing. You can't live the Christian life without God's help. Being dependent on Him. Being humble enough to come and ask. God opposes the proud. But He gives grace to the humble. God comes running to those who are hungry for him and thirsty for him, who long for him and pant for him. Today don't reject him. Today don't harden your heart. But allow God just to, to do what only he can do today. God lives in a different realm, a different perspective understands things on a different level and for all the greatness and splendor and might and majesty of God he is interested in each of you today he says to you you are mine I bought you at a price I love you I cherish you I treasure you and I long for you to walk with me to be with me live your life holding my hand walking through life hand in hand sitting together standing together walking together working together maybe today there are things in your life that have stopped you from serving God because you've had a wrong perspective Maybe today God is saying, I need you to turn. I'm longing for you to change in your attitude, in your heart today. God is looking at our hearts. Is he seeing iniquity in our hearts? today you have trespassed against him and you've gone beyond where you should have gone you've done what you know you shouldn't have done and yet today God says but I love you with all of my heart and I long to cleanse you, I long to forgive you I long for you to have a fresh start all I need is for you to come and to ask first today will you do that Today you're thinking of something in some area where you've just you realize you're falling short you're constantly missing it it might be a bad habit of some kind something you do on a daily basis you just can't get a handle on you just don't seem to be able to grasp it God wants to come into that situation and to help you and to walk with you and to show you how you can overcome cleanse us today heavenly father we pray we pray lord that you would forgive us of our sin we pray that you would lord cleanse us of all iniquity we ask lord jesus that you would forgive us for the times when we have trespassed against you the times when we've had guile in our heart but today lord we would live in light of who you are and what you're doing we recognize lord all around us there are many things trying to buy for our attention and to pull us down we come to you today, Lord, knowing that you are the one that can lift us up and to pull us out of the mire and mire and to set our feet on the rock, Christ Jesus. I pray today, Lord, for every single person here today, that, Lord, that everyone would walk out of here, Lord Jesus, knowing that they're loved by the creator of the universe, that they ha have someone who is interested in every aspect of their life. I pray today, Lord, that every single person would walk out of here knowing that you have a plan and a purpose for their life, that their life has meaning. It's not meaningless, it's not purposeless, it's not a meandering, but that you are the center. I pray, Lord, today that you'd help each one of us, Lord. We want to make you center of our lives, center of our week, center of our work, 
centre, Lord, of our relationship so that you become everything that you desire us to become. Bring transformation, we pray in Jesus' lovely name. And all those people said, If you would like to know more, please visit us at www.thedestinychurch.co.uk.